Hey up, I'm the Yorkshire Time Lord, and this is the Doctor Who rating show, The Power of the Doctor. Okay, so I've been thinking about doing a video regarding the overnight ratings and final ratings of The Power of the Doctor uh, since the ratings came in, because I think the Legend of the Sea Devils one worked quite well. And I think with the power of the Doctor it's quite interesting because it was up against some very strong competition. You had Family Fortune, to Gino Di Campo, you had Who Wants to Be a Millionaire returning for some sp for, for a special as well, and you had the Larkins too. So firstly, I'm just going to take a look at the top five of the nights for the 17th to 23rd of October 2022. And at number one and number two, you got Strictly Come Dancing on a Saturday and a results show on a Sunday. Which isn't really a surprise, you know, Strictly Come Dancing is a you know, huge hit. It attracts quite a big audience and you can see it in these ratings as well. 8.4 million for the Saturday show and 8.2 million for the Sunday show as well. Didn't really think it was the, uh, the best episode of Strictly. I thought some of the song choices were a bit, uh, a bit odd. Especially Ballroom Blitz for Come Dancing. I mean, Ballroom Blitz isn't even the theme to Come Dancing. What, what were they thinking? <laughs> They could have just used the Strictly theme. They had the Strictly theme right there and they used Ballroom Blitz. It was a very, uh, very odd choice. I mean, the Doctor Who dance was pretty good. It was, you know, the Doctor Who dance was very good and Helen Skelton's dance to the Blue Peter theme I thought was a really good dance by Helen Skelton. And I think she's done really well in Strictly. But uh, yeah, some of the choices were a little bit odd. Then at number three, you've got Great British Bake Off with 4.9 million. I've never really understood the appeal of that show, but it does, you know, garner quite a big audience, so fair play to those who, um, you know, enjoy watching it. And at number four and number five, you've got two editions of BBC News at six. You've got the first edition with 4.9 million, then you've got the Monday edition with 4.4 million. Again, not too much of a surprise, there's been a lot going on in the news lately, you know, what we've, you know, got a new Prime Minister and we've got a new monarch. Not really too much of a surprise, BBC News is doing quite well at the moment. You know, you've got to keep up to date with the news and uh, you know, know what's going on around the world and all that, so it's not uh, not really a surprise that Beauty News at 6 uh, gets you know, such you know, decent viewing figures. At number 6 you've got Antiques World Show with 4.4 million, and that was a centenary special as well, like Doctor Who. At number 7 you got BBC News at 6 again. This time the Wednesday edition with 4.4 million. So people do you know, really like catching up with their news. At uh, number 8 you've got Blanksy Blank with 4.2 million. Uh, it's one of my favourite shows on the weekend at the moment. Very funny with Bradley Walsh. And number 9 you've got BBC News at 6 again. Tuesday edition at 4.2 million. So yeah obviously the, the news does very well for BBC which isn't really a surprise because it is known for its excellent news coverage. And then at number 10, you've got Emmerdale, the Wednesday edition at 4.2 million. Emmerdale was celebrating its 50th anniversary, so it's not really a surprise to see it come at number 10. Obviously, you know, a lot of interest of it being 50 years of Emmerdale and, uh, you know, celebrating the show's uh, you know, huge legacy in regards to the number of years it's been on television. Okay, so now just taking a look at where Doctor Who landed in the overnights for the 17th to 23rd of October 2022, you can see that Doctor Who came in number 20 for the week with 3.7 million. I think that's a uh, you know, very good rating for the show. I think it did really well to get to land the 3.7 million, especially against the uh, you know, strong competition that aired across the week. And I think you know, it's also the fact that it's a regeneration episode as well. And you had that shock twist with David Tennant and so many uh, returning familiar faces such as uh, Katie Manning as Joe Grant and Bonnie Langford as Melanie Bush. And that amazing moment with William Russell returning as Ian Chesterton. I think all those things will have helped it achieve that overnight of 3.7 million. And then at number 21 you've got Emmerdale, the first day edition with 3.6 million. So Emmerdale's done very well for its 50th anniversary, obviously there's been a lot of interest with it being 50 years of Emmerdale. And then at number 22 you've got Have I Got News For You with 3.6 million. That one I do find a little bit surprising because I didn't really think it was all that popular now really. You never really see anybody discuss it on social media. So I'm very surprised that it came in at number 22. And I thought that might have been where Gino Campos' Tony Fortunes may have landed or The Millionaire. 
uh, with Jeremy Clarkson. So I'm very surprised that Have I Got News For You achieved better ratings than both Gino's Funny Fortunes and Jeremy Clarkson's Who Wants To Be A Millionaire. I thought both those shows were, you know, insanely popular for ITV, so I'm very surprised that they haven't, uh, you know, come out with better viewing figures than Have I Got News For You. At number 23 is Michael McIntyre's Wheel with 3.6 million. I think that show's done really well considering that the BBC are putting, are putting it on at like 5.30pm in the evening. I think that's just such a daft bit of scheduling for the BBC. I just can't fathom why the BBC have decided to put it on so early in the evening. I mean I got I Can See Your Voice on after Blankety Blank. I would have thought it would have made far more sense to put I Can See Your Voice on in the summer rather than putting it on after Blankety Blank because it's more of a sort of uh, it doesn't, doesn't really do all that brilliantly, really, yet uh, I can see your voice. It would have made more sense to have burnt it off in the summer. And, you know, the wheel, I think, should have really been on at night, after Blanky Blank, around uh, 10 past 9, rather than at 5.30pm in the evening. It's definitely far too early for it to air at 5.30pm, and I just really can't fathom from the decision made by the BBC schedulers there. I mean, you know, to be fair, it has done pretty well for the BBC in its uh, early evening slot. But I still don't think it was really the best decision for the show. And I do think it could have been uh, achieving better viewing figures if it had been put on around ten past nine once Blanky Blank was finished. And at number 24, you've got the BBC Weekend News, the Saturday edition, with 3.5 million. And I think, you know, again, you know, that's pretty decent for BBC News. And it's, again, not really surprising that BBC News does so well in the ratings. As I say, you know, there's a lot going on in the news at the moment, and the BBC is known across the world for its um, excellent news output as well. There isn't really anybody that does news quite like the BBC does it, so it's not really a surprise that audiences always choose the BBC news compared to ITV or Channel 4 or Channel 5. Now when you look at the top 5 for the final ratings for something for 23rd of October 2022, Doctor Who does fare a lot better in the final ratings. At number one and two, unsurprisingly, you've got Strictly Come Dancing, both Saturday and Sunday. 9.8 million for the Saturday edition and 8.6 million for the Sunday edition of Strictly. So you can see just how well that does on, uh, on Catch Up with uh, Strictly's uh, final ratings. And then number three, you've got Great British Bake Off again, with 7.7 .7 million in the final ratings. Number four is Doc Martin with 5.6 million, like Doctor Who, it's another one of those shows that's a long-running show, it's developed quite a fan base and uh, you know it's been going on for many years and it's got the star power of Martin Clunes as well, so you know it's not really uh, too much of a shock that that show does as well as it does, but uh, at number five you've got Doctor Who with 5.2 million, which is a very good result for the show coming in fifth of the week. And it's the first time in a few years that it's come in at uh, number 5. The last time was back in uh, 2018, during Series 11, that the show managed uh, a top 5 uh, ratings position. So that is a very, very good result for Doctor Who, and I think a lot of that has got to do with not just the fact that it's Jodie Whittaker's Regeneration episode, but also the fact that it ended with the regeneration into David Tennant. I imagine that's probably created quite a bit of word of mouth. Uh, quite a few casual viewers uh, wishing to check it out to see the uh, the twist ending with David Tennant when everybody was expecting she was the Gatcher. And it also might have something to do as well with the uh, you know surprise guest appearances from various companions from across the show's, uh, show's history like Ian and uh, you know, had uh, Katie Manning as Joe Grant and Bonnie Langford as Mel. Could be a few people checking it out for the uh, surprise uh, guest appearances as well. And then when you look at 6 to 10 for the over for the final ratings of something to the 23rd of October 2022, you can really see um, you know, how much uh, business was sort of still for ITV. That entire 6 to 10 is all taken up with ITV soaps. You've got Coronation Street, six, number 6 and 7, so the Wednesday edition of Corey, and then you've got the Monday edition of Corey, and then you've got Emmerdale, uh, positions 8 and 9 for the Tuesday and Wednesday editions. And then Coronation Street again for the Friday editions. So the Wednesday edition of Coronation Street got 5.2 million and the Monday one got 5.1 million. And at number 10 for Cory it's 5.1 million again. And in between you got Emmerdale Tuesday and Wednesday at 5.1 million and 5.1 million again. So yeah you can really see you know why ITV keep making the soaps and uh, how, how, you know, how well the ITV soaps do in the context of the uh, TV ratings. 
If ITV didn't have the soaps, you know, there, there would be, you know, really snooker if it didn't have the soaps. I don't think, you know, Coronation Street, I don't watch Emmerdale, but I do watch Coronation Street. And I, I don't think Coronation Street is quite as good, creatively speaking, as it was even a year ago, really. I think a lot of the storylines uh, are a little bit, uh, shall we say, a little bit daft. I don't really think they're quite, uh, they're quite as effective as they used to be. But, uh, it, you know, fair play to ITV, you know, it is still doing well and we, we still do continue to watch, you know, Coronation Street in this country, even if the writing's not quite up to the standard um, that uh, we're perhaps used to. But Emmerdale's done very well for its uh, 50th anniversary week. And now, taking a look at uh, the last Regeneration special, mm -hmm. compared to Doctor Who, The Power of the Doctor, you can see, really, that The Power of the Doctor has actually done quite well. The power of the Doctor, as I say, the other night was 3.7 million and the final was 5.2 million. And compared to the regeneration special before that, Trice Upon a Time. Trice Upon a Time got 5.7 million overnights and 7.9 million final. Now, yeah, on the face of it you might say, well, there is a little bit of a drop there. But you've got to remember, the TV landscape has changed a lot since Trice Upon a Time aired in 2017. So I think when you factor in the changing TV landscape, I think The Power of the Doctor holds up very well in the ratings compared to Trice Upon a Time. I think 5.2 million is the final rating is very good for it. And I think 3.6 million is good for um, another light rating as well. I think, you know, you can see that there's certainly been a lot of interest generated by the fact that it's a regeneration special. And uh, also, you know, the fact that uh, you've got the twist ending with David Tennant. And I think it's also interesting to note as well how, you know, both episodes feature David Bradley returning as a first Doctor as well. Seems to be uh, becoming a bit of a good luck charm uh, for these uh, Regeneration specials in regards to their performance in the ratings. It's been in two Regeneration specials that have done very well for the BBC and uh, it certainly seems like audiences maybe are interested in seeing him playing that role of the first Doctor originated by William Hartnell. So I don't think there's anything to worry about in regards to Doctor Who's ratings for The Power of the Doctor. I think it has, in general, done very well when you compare it to its performance in the past uh, with the uh, Regeneration special that came before it. Some may say, well, why not compare it to the other Regeneration specials as well? But I don't think that would really give a very realistic picture because they aired in a completely different TV landscape. You know, the viewing figures, you know, back in 2005 or, you know, 2010, for example, were a lot different to the viewing figures in uh, 2022. So I think 2017 is the nearest comparison um, that we have to, you know, a regeneration special in 2022 and how, you know, it should be expected to perform in 2022. So taking a look at how the power of a Doctor performed compared to the other two episodes that aired this year as part of the 2022 specials, you can see, again, as I say, the power of a Doctor, 3.7 million overnight, 5.2 million final. With either the Daleks, it got 3.2 million overnight and 4.3 million final. And Legend of the Sea Devils was 2.2 million overnight and 3.3 million final. So I'd say the power of a Doctor did very well compared to the other two specials. Certainly, it's quite a max improvement on Legend of the Sea Devils. And it's a pretty decent improvement on either the Daleks as well. So it does show, you know, how much power that, um, you know, a generation special holds, that it can essentially attract, uh, you know, greater interest than uh, other episodes in the series, due to the fact that it's the regeneration, the introduction of a new Doctor, um, and it's that thing of being able to see how the Doctor ends, how they go out of it, and, you know, what causes their death. It certainly carries a lot of intrigue for both casual viewers and fans of the show as well. I think as well, uh, the 60th anniversary specials next year are going to attract quite a big audience the return of David Tennant and Catherine Tate as Donna Noble. I think, uh, you know, there's quite a lot of the public that have quite fond memories of David Tennant as the Doctor and Catherine Tate as Donna Noble. So I'm expecting the 60th anniversary to perform quite well, especially on the back of the Power of the Doctor's ratings, which I think are very good for 2022. I'm certainly, you know, very intrigued to see, you know, which way it goes with the uh, 60th anniversary specials. Either, you know, we'll get some pretty decent ratings for 2022 in line with Power of the Doctor, a 5.2 million overnight and a 3.6 million final, or you know, it will do, you know, remarkably well, a bit like the Gavin and Stacey Christmas special a few years ago, which managed to get 16 million viewers, which was pretty, uh, pretty remarkable. It'd be interesting to see if David Tennant's star power, and the fact that we've got Neil Patrick Harris as well, who's a big Hollywood star, and Catherine Tate's Donna Noble. It'll be interesting to see if that causes the show to, um, you know, achieve, you know, pretty high ratings. 
You could maybe be looking at 10 million overnights even and, you know, 16 million finals, who knows? Who knows? It, it depends, you know, just how much interest there is in, in, in regarding, um, you know, the casual uh, viewers of a show and, um, you know, whether it can essentially uh, attract the interest of the uh, general public. But I'm certainly intrigued to see where the 60th anniversary specials land. Anyway, what do you think of Power of the Doctor's ratings? Do you think it's done well in the ratings? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.